first thank Greg Shea from Revmark for making me a bunch of Duresta markers. Permanent, fine tip, fat tip, and white. Thank you, my friend. Check that out. And they have these cool caps where if you wear it on your belt, it's kind of like a holster. Yesterday, I posted my steel bark table. A lot of people want to know how I came up with this idea. This is an old idea. I've had this for a very long time. When I found this piece of walnut when I went to the wood gathering in Skyatuk, Oklahoma in June, I thought this could be a good candidate to do that project. It is an interesting way it developed. I didn't know I was going to leave all the welds on the outside. I thought I was going to grind it all smooth and I was going to have this beautiful piece of steel flowing around the outside, which is still something I want to try and do. But as I developed this technique of doing that with all the little pieces and I welded all those little lines, I said, it looks like bark. I started realizing that's what it should be. The idea of welding inside and burning the wood, that came while I was working. This is a really good example of getting involved with a project before you finish thinking it through because you don't know what is going to come of it. Let the project dictate to you some of the aspects of it. The video's up. There's also a voiceover version on my Patreon, so you can check that out as well. I've been working on this loco nut cart. It's supposed to look like it was made on Gilligan's Island. I've been working on this for a few weeks now, but we kind of wrapped it up in the last couple days. I didn't really film it because it really wasn't an exciting build. The cart was already made. I just had to cover it with bamboo, and that's just a matter of gluing and nailing bamboo in place. Interesting problem arose is that my CNC machine is down. The circuitry is messed up. I'm waiting on a new circuit board. So I had to make all these signs the old-fashioned way. At first when the CNC machine was down, I was really like, oh my god, I'm not going to be able to finish this. Partway through the week when I realized I really wasn't going to be able to get the CNC machine up and going, I had to improvise. I did it the old school way. I simply printed out the paper, spray glued it down, cut out all the stuff that needed to be masked, sprayed it, and we got beautiful sharp edge looking signs. I was hoping to router out all those spots, but it looks just the same from five feet away. The client's happy, we just gotta do a couple more finishing touches on it, then it's getting shipped, I think, to California. I got a bunch of new tools this week. My buddy Joel Bischoff sold me a bunch of his grandfather's metalworking tools. And he gave me a whole bunch of extra stuff. So Joel, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I now have a brake. I now have a jump shear and a bunch of bead rolling devices to make edge bead edges on sheet metal. So look for some cool new projects with my new sheet metal tools. And I got my new saw stop. It's a seven and a half horsepower, three phase production machine. This machine is a workhorse. It's meant to be put through the ringer. Apparently it will not bog down. It will last quite a bit of time. I need to get a rotary phase converter or some sort of VFD for this machine. It is a three phase. My shop currently is only a single phase 220. This facility where my shop is, I might have three phase, but I got to get in touch with the owner and hire an electrician to bring it in. I'm going to learn a lot about three phase in the next couple of weeks. Saw so stop, thank you very much. You guys watch NYC CNC? A couple weeks ago, John had a video up where him and his friend etched brass. They made uh, replacement plates for some antique machinery. And I watched that and I thought to myself, I think I could do that. So me and my buddy Joel, who was here with the sheet metal, we experimented and we experimented quite successfully. I was able to etch the brass. I used PCB board etching cream from Radio Shack and it worked perfect. We just had to let it sit overnight. It etched in quite deep, deep enough so that when you see me spray paint inside there and then sand it off, the background was not affected at all. I'm definitely gonna do this again for some other stuff.
the Intello one for a hike yesterday. So a couple weeks ago I told you I was going to have some news. The news is getting better. I'll be able to tell you a little bit more about it next week when it's solidified. But things are looking good. Thank you for hanging out with me.